Hello friends, today we are going to run an experiment on bevel gears. In our previous four webcasts, we have um, did experiment with same size spar gears, different size spar gears, and um, spar gear with idler and compound gear train uh, gears setup. Today we are going to do um, experiment on bevel gears. So what is a bevel gear and what are some application of bevel gear? So, be so bevel gears are rotating wheels that have their teeth facing away from the side of the wheels at an angle. Some application of bevel gear are power transfer from one gear to another gear shaft which are in angle. Uh, mostly uh, they are in 90 degree angle. So you see one gear here has a shaft in this direction and the other gear here has a shaft 90 degree to the um, other shaft and, and also um, you can also use bevel gear to power transfer uh, from one gear to another who are rotating in different speed so this small gear would be at high speed while the bigger gear would be at low speed so what experiment we're gonna perform today we're gonna um, apply different load on our um, follower gear and we're gonna count how much effort it takes to our driver gear to raise that load and we're gonna do this for several tests and we're gonna plot um, load versus effort diagram and we're also gonna uh, plot um, efficiency versus uh, load diagram and we're gonna study those uh, plots before doing the test Let's take a closer look to our system uh, here. This is our setup. We have here the driver bevel gear, which is in, in on this shaft. So we have uh, this drum where we have the load attached so it can go up and down. And we have this uh, other gear, which is at 90 degree. Um, the shaft of the big uh, follower gear is 90 degree with the driver gear. And it also have a drum at the back so when the gear rotates the load will be um, going upward or downward another thing to notice is that though they are rotating in different shaft if um, my driver rotates in clockwise um, my follower will also rotate in clockwise if my uh, driver rotates in anti-clockwise then my follower will also rotate in anti-clockwise direction so for a simple uh, bevel gear like this, the direction of rotation remains the same for the both uh, follower, um, driver and follower. So our um, driver gear here has total 10 teeth and our follower gear has total uh, 40 teeth. And so in a nutshell, in our bevel gear setup here, we have driver and follower. The driver has 10 teeth and the follower has 40 teeth. The direction of rotation are on the same direction, meaning if driver, my driver is rotating in clockwise, the follower will rotate in clockwise direction. If my driver is rotating counterclockwise, the follower will rotate in counterclockwise direction, though the axis of rotation is in perpendicular. So the axis of rotation of the driver and follower are 90 degree in our setup if we take the ratio of di driver to the follower we'll have 10 over 40 which is 1 over 4 that means 4 turn of the driver here the driver gear 4 turn will be equal to 1 turn full turn of the follower gear so 4 so now is the time to run the test so this is our um, driver because this is attached to our driver wheel and this is our fol follower so I so I have this disc each of them uh, 10 gram I have put 14 over my load side and this hook is 10 gram so I have 150 gram on my um, um, load side on my effort I have this hook which is 10 gram and I put uh, four of this uh, this so I have 50 gram on my fork so you see they're not moving almost at the end edge and the balance so what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna add this um, 
black disc I have, which is each of them are one gram. So I'm going to add, for example, one at a time. And you see it has started to move. So for this setup, what it is is that um, to raise 150 gram, I need I was needed 51 gram. Now we're going to run several tests at different load and we'll see how much effort we need to do um, to raise the load. 200 gram load. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add five of this um, disc one two three four and five now let's add um, another um, silver disc on my e4 side and see if that moves now so I have 60 gram here now, and then I have added two more black discs, so 62. Uh, I'm adding two more, so 64. It's not moving yet. So another two more, so 66. And now two more, 68, and it moved. So for 200 gram, I need a 68 gram effort gonna do 250 gram so from the previous test I'm just gonna add 50 more gram on my load and my I'm gonna add one more to my e4 see if that works no so I'm gonna add another one so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add one if it moves too fast then I, have, I instead of using this I'm gonna use the black one because it could be the fraction between 10 so it could be 9 8 something so let me try this one and you see slowly moving maybe I need to add one or more two gram because now it's moving so we'll take that so now we're gonna run, run the same similar test uh, for um, 300 350 400 and 450 gram and I'm gonna show uh, the final result after we do the same thing tests so now here are the results uh, for you see for the load 150 200 440 450 we have the e4 so for 150 51 for 268 for 250 80 for 300 gram load 100 gram e4 for 350 113 and then for 400 and 450 I have we have um, 130 and 143 e4 so now we're gonna use this data to find mechanical advantage and efficiency for each cases and then we're going to plot this scenario to see a curve. So now we're going to show you one step um, for one data point how to find mechanical advantage and efficiency. Mechanical advantage is the ratio of load over effort. So for the first data point 150 load take uh, 51 efforts so the mechanical advantage is 2.94 which is greater than 1 that means we need less effort um, um, to raise a higher load. Uh, efficiency, how do we find efficiency? Is the ratio over mechanical advantage or to over velocity ratio? We saw in our, um, for this our setup, we have velocity ratio of four, meaning um, it takes four turns um, of the driver to have one turn of the follower. 
So if we divide it by that, we found the efficiency of 73.5%. Now we're going to follow the same procedure for all our data points and we'll see how it looks like. So we have finished our calculation and this is the result looks like. So if we see our mechanical advantage, it varies between 2.94 to 3.14. Uh, for higher load, these are more stable. Um, and efficiency ranging from 73.5% to 78%. So um, efficiency and mechanical advantage, you see they are uh, more stable on for higher load starting from 250 they are kind of the same you see here and here 78 and at lower load it was kind of low so we have plot our data into um, a graph so this is our first graph which is load versus effort and we see that the chart on a uh, load versus effort um, is a almost a linear straight line uh, a proportional relationship um, and uh, you can find the mechanical advantage by taking the slope and you see from our data the slope was almost three and it is um, since we got a linear relationship so the slope is almost everywhere should be around three and so what it tells us that our test was um, almost accurate though we did a rough estimation of the loads um, but we got a linear plot and that should be our expected um, plot that we should um, get when we plot load versus effort. Now we're going to look into our efficiency versus load plot. So this is our efficiency versus load plot. We have plotted all the data that we have um, received. Uh, we showed you previously. So if we um, analyze this, you see that at the lower load, we had an efficiency lower, a little bit lower than the average, about uh, from about 250 load, um, our efficiency is kind of uh, stable. Um, and that's what we should expect for, uh, for our setup. Um, um, for bevel gears, our efficiency should be around 80%. Um, so our result is also um, kind of um, accurate um, or where we expect it. Again, so this concludes our experiment for bevel gears. In um, next lecture, we're going to do um, experiment with warm gears. But till then, um, see you in next video. Till then, thank you.